Uh, welcome to another episode of Threads of Enlightenment. We have Christian. This, uh, he's here to talk to us and to educate us, to lift us to that next level that you and I will become better human spirits, that we may be able to understand and gain wisdom from his insights, that you and I can lift each other and began to grow as one another to become an army of men and women that are in love with themselves, that know who they are, that doesn't believe what people say about them, but they believe what they know about themselves. And so it's with honor that I welcome you to Threads of Enlightenment. Kristen, tell us about yourself. Tell us what you have created so far in your life. Yeah, Ken, thank you so much for you know allowing me to be on this show. I love what you're doing. I love what you're going for, and I love what you're you know the impact that you're putting in these people's lives. You know, I've thank you. Uh, you know, I've been through a lot of sh uh, shenanigans throughout my life, and uh, you know, obviously going through uh, you know the pornography and other things that I've struggled with, and and mm -hmm. you know, uh, built built you know incredible businesses, learned a lot of different things, you know, marketing, sales funnels, a lot of strategy. But really, what I realized what it comes down to is you know what we talk about in. In our, in our on our podcast is success versus significance success is okay wonderful you're on the top of the hill fantastic you're, you're like look at me i'm incredible right significance is mm -hmm. what i think most of us will 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 want to achieve in life is how can i help others come to the top of the mountain with me right yeah uh, and it takes mm -hmm. it takes a longer right but one of the things is mm -hmm. is you, you know definitely with, with that strategy you want to help everybody but also yeah. not everybody is in a situation they where they want help and that's mm -hmm. tough. You know, it's, it's a tough yeah. situation because you have to identify the people that are coming to you and then you can mentor and educate and teach those individuals. And so, mm -hmm. like, I think the best analogy that I, I could ever come up with and someone that I listened to actually told this anal analogy. He said when, when um, you know, the, um, the Coast Guard is, is out there trying to save people after a shipwreck or something like that, um, they said, you know, the number one thing is you gotta you gotta throw the life jacket, life life preserver to the people that are coming to the boat, right? Because what that allows mm -hmm. you to understand is that those are the individuals that then you can work with, right? And so that tells you, yeah, you know, that's that's the same thing in life, right? You've got to find people that have a willingness, that are humble, that want to learn and they want to develop. Uh, and I think that's the tough discernment that we all have to have. We we want to help those that need help. But also, they don't mm -hmm. want help, and that's okay. You can't don't don't waste your time on them. Find the people that are humble enough, that are seeking guidance and want more. Because all of a sudden, you can make an impact in those people's lives. And it's it's tough, and it's 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 kind of tough talk a little bit. But also, mm -hmm. in due time, I think God puts enough pressure on people that all of a sudden they 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 need to change and they have to yeah. change. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. And and whether that's all of a sudden you're you're smoking so much, you're smoking 10 packs a day, and all of a sudden you go to the doctor and they say, hey, if you smoke another pack, you're going to die, right? And there's mm -hmm. enough pain that then they'll cause yeah. them to move. And some individuals are sitting there going, well, um, they, they, can, they can hit that pain a lot earlier in life, and they realize they don't want to be in that situation. Right. And so, for mm -hmm. example, you yeah, know, sometimes yeah. they, they can they can get a, a, a taste of, uh, of, of smoking and they go, oh, I don't like that. That's enough pain for them. Yeah, I don't yeah. want to do this. Mm -hmm. And I know the causality of what that does. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, and that's just with mm -hmm. everything in life. Uh, and that's what I learned. It's like, OK. Um, and, and obviously I'm not there yet. Right. There, there's still a lot that I have to learn, you know, but what I realized mm -hmm. is that there are certain things that I have developed. that's like, OK, this makes sense that I could bring to the audience. And and, uh, you know, again, obviously building systems and, and, and businesses and stuff like that. But I think it really comes down to, unless you have the foundation right, everything yeah. else is, is wrong, right? Yeah. And yeah. what I always found very interesting is how self-esteem and how confidence comes into play in those circumstances, mm -hmm. um, you know? Yeah. So uh, that, that's, yeah. Kind of what, uh, that's kind of my history a little bit. Yeah, absolutely. You, I mean, you've said so much in, in that um, condensed uh, speech that you just gave. And um, uh, before we came on, I talked to you about disciples and, and church members and the difference between those two. And I use Jesus a lot because my background is Christianity. And I look at his model that he, he used. He was walking uh, all over the place and he never talked to a lot of people except he picked just a few. And so he picked them and he said to them, hey, guys, um, he picked these guys when they were working, man. Some of them were at work, Christian. So you're going to meet some people that are working at their jobs. And these guys were fishermen and they said, hey, 
follow me and I'll make you fishes of men. And they dropped their stuff and they, they followed him. He didn't say that to a couple, to a lot of people. He said that to only a few, just 12 that we know of. And so they were ready for a change. It is just someone coming up to them and said, hey, you want to try something different? And so they said, yeah, I want to try something different. And they're out. They left their father. They left and, and, and their business and went and followed someone uh, to gain the insight that they needed in order for them to change the world, which we had talked about, that these men and the women, they changed the world. And so here you are. Um, the purpose of us all getting this enlightenment and becoming better students, the most beautiful thing of it all is that we become uh, servants at the end of the, the journey, um, per se, as we begin to become better teachers and understanding of ourselves, that the, the journey doesn't end. It, the fruit of us becoming enlightened is becoming teachers. And so that's the fun part. So let's get back to when it wasn't that much fun, um, Christian. Let's talk about how, when you were this guy just struggling in life, uh, because where you are today is a beautiful creation that you've gotten there, but you didn't get there today. Uh, you didn't wake up and it, wasn't, it didn't happen instantaneously. Talk to the people, tell them some of the challenges you had mentioned about self-esteem in which that it plays a key role in personal growth. But go before that, when, we, when you were programmed by other people, other systems, before you started the stripping away of the mentality, behaviors, and so forth. Talk to us a little about uh, maybe high school was when you started becoming a little... Uh, or college, when was it that you start making those moves? Yeah, Ken, I really appreciate it. First of all, you bringing up, you know, obviously Jesus and discipleship and, and uh, you know, that, you know, the, the Christian realm, right? God, I, I think yeah. it's it's so sad that we definitely don't talk about that, have these conversations, because, you know, that's really what it comes down to, I think, definitely specifically the church. You know, I, I hear so many people, they go, oh, this is what the church needs to do. This is what the church needs to do. <laughs> and, and the thing is, is I, I simply say, hey, well, who's the church? You are, yeah. right? Isn't that, what, yeah. you know, isn't that what the Bible says? And all of a sudden, so mm -hmm. so really what you're saying is this what you need to do, correct? Yes. And all of a sudden they go, oh, shoot, I guess so, right? My point is yeah. behind it, you know, what, what I loved about like, you know, Jesus and his, his servant leadership really is he's the one that, that went out there and prayed. He's the one that did it. He's the one that you know, actually yep. sat with the sinner and the tax collector. And the thing is, is that shows to you that he was willing to do it. And so, so many times, and I want to really share this and emphasize this because see, um, you know, and I, I'm, I'm guilty of it as well. Right. I sit here and I judge someone and mm -hmm. then I realize, OK, I'm not the one that's in charge of judging. Right. That's not my job. Yeah. My job is to love on them. And they may yeah. have a misunderstanding of what Christianity is. That's the reason why yeah. they believe what they believe, because they've been and, 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 and your heart should go out to those people because there's a misunderstanding. Yeah. And then when mm -hmm. you ask them and ask them questions and say, hey, why, why do you believe what you believe? Well, because, you know, I, I had this experience. A lot of times it has an experience. Well, I was at this yeah. church one time or, you know, I had these people and they were trying to throw, you know, throw it down my throat. And I didn't like that feeling and blah, blah, blah. And ever since I've walked away from the church or walked away from God, I never believed it. So when you get really get down to that understanding, then it's like, oh, there's a misalignment. There's something, mm -hmm. that, there's a miscommunication because actually, you know, God is not bad. He loves you so much that he mm -hmm. actually sacrificed his own son. You know, you have to yeah. basically, yep. in, in order to go to hell, you have to literally step over Jesus because he wants you to survive. He wants you to be in heaven. Right. And so once you understand yeah. that and grasp that, it's like, then you allow people to understand. And so instead of coming in with a, with a judgment, now coming back to what you're saying as well, you know, yeah, I, I did bring up self and steam and self uh, image issues because I think that is such a, a key component component of everything. Right. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. even fear it's, it's, you know, and, and trust, right. Trusting in God, yep. trusting yep. in, and, uh, you know, having that, you know, I find so many individuals have anxiety and they use that as a substitute. Well, I, I'm always anxious, you know, but mm -hmm. no, but what you mm -hmm. are is you're not trusting in God. And with that, then yeah. you're trying to control something you can't control and God's knocking on your door and say, here, give it to me. I will, yeah. I will yeah. never, never forsake you. Right. And once you understand that, mm -hmm. it's like, wow, you know, men will, Women will, mm -hmm. kids will, parents will, because we're all flesh, we're all human, and we yeah. all fall short. But then what's beautiful yeah. is that God will never. 
God's yep. always sustainable, always, always. Uh, there. So coming back to obviously my story a little bit. So I was actually an inclusion kid, which is what you call kind of a special ed in, in, in the, in the uh, school. And I had mm-hmm. to go out of the, um, the specific classrooms because I, I, I needed, you know, help with retention and stuff like that. And that actually kind of haunted me for a very uh, large portion of my life until mm-hmm. I started getting into sales and entrepreneurship. And then, you know, I, I loved, I love business just because I love the environment. I love self improvement. I love reading, and, mm-hmm. and it wasn't like I, I was I was you know love reading. It was that I love what they were telling me. I loved, hey, yeah, you're, yeah. you're ambitious. You're motivated. You can do it. You're accomplished, right? And then I started realizing that other people like that were just like me, mm-hmm. where they yeah. you know, had dyslexia, they had this struggle, they had this whatever. Then I started realizing that actually my brain functions at a very very high level. It's just mm-hmm. that education, that system, just didn't work. The well system, how I, yes, how I, you know. Uh, think and stuff and and mm-hmm. process and so one of the things i always tell people is you know obviously you know being a addicted pornography and, and things like that it's what that has allowed me to realize is your how you work how you operate right mm-hmm. uh, so for example i listen to audiobooks at 1.2 speed just because that's mm-hmm. how my mind works some yeah. people love to sit down they read a book and they write and they and they take a whole year to read a book hey that's fine as long as you read mm-hmm. a book right whatever it may be it's your system your process but you have to figure out how you learn and have you figure things out uh and then also just understand like okay you know and, and business as well like I, I love to automate and leverage things some people mm-hmm. like to come in and do it themselves because they don't like anybody else doing it right and that's yeah, just a different yeah. personality me i love to leverage because i don't want to do it i don't waste waste my time whatever so again, coming. I know we're kind of hit different subjects, but my point oh, that's is, that's all right. You know, yeah. self esteem and, and self confidence. That's really what it came down to, and you start realizing that, yes, you you failed, but you're not a failure. And so that's also mm-hmm. what that, that's why I think you know Christianity is so beautiful, because mm-hmm. basically God says, yes, you're a sinner, but I saved you from that sin, right? Yeah, and yeah. A sin, you know, and and then that that releases you and allows you to say. You know, yeah, you're a sinner, you're a sinner, you're a sinner. It's not one sin's worse than others. Mm-hmm. Everybody's sin. God is so great that all sin is all sin, period. Yeah. It doesn't matter if you period. murdered someone. It yeah. doesn't matter if you this. It doesn't matter if you stole or cheated or mm-hmm. whatever, right? Sin is sin. And once you can start releasing yourself from that, and then you realize, wow, that's that's just that's just that's a lot of freedom. And and, yeah. and, and then you you're not in a situation where I'm judging because, oh well, his sin is worse than my sin. Oh, that yeah. person's yeah. sin is worse than no, sin mm-hmm. is sin, period. And there's that truth and it has to hit you. Uh, and still, even to, do, to this day, you know, as you read, you know, truth in the Bible, it's just, it just hits you. It's just there's just yeah. such authority in it. Uh, but to explain that, you know, I think that's really where it came down to. And then obviously business helped me in, in kind of realizing, okay, what you're really capable of, what you're worth, what you're, mm-hmm. what you're, what you're you know, there's just, you, you're able to do so much more. And I think God has yes. such an incredible um Incredible vision for your life. Yep. One of the things I've learned is that God will put a lot of pressure on you, and mm-hmm. you, you almost live like almost a circular life, a life yeah. that's just. Why do I keep running these same situations? Yes. Why do I keep running mm-hmm. the same? And you have to stop sometimes because we're just go go go. You have to stop and say, okay, there's something going on, right? Yeah. And I got to figure out why am I hitting the what same situation, financial mm-hmm. situation, financial whatever it may be, right? And you have to say, okay, well, what am I going to do to make sure that I'm not in that situation again? Right. Yeah. And you have to put boundaries in. So I hope that makes sense, Ken. Oh, yeah. I think one of the things that is beautiful about um, the relationship with God, again, because my background is Christianity and I grew up, I was a pastor and all. And um, I um, walked away from the church and Kate told God I was going to be the baddest sinner he ever saw. And he probably just laughed at me. But he brought me back. I learned a lot. One of the things that I learned was as it was in the beginning with Adam, it was their custom. Uh, What was that? It was their custom to come and sit down and talk. Here is this creation that God created, and he had an audience with him every day as it was in the cool of the day they came. After Adam severed that relationship by sinning, uh, the spirit man was disconnected from God. And so when, but God still kept the appointment. And that's the beautiful thing about God. He still kept the appointment. He, he showed up, but Adam wasn't there. And he says, Adam, where are you? You know, so I think that alone is a powerful example of a loving God, a loving father. 
he kept the appointment, even though he knew what happened. But he was still there. And I try my best to tell people that God is there. And the reason why you are constantly, as you talk about, um, uh, people tell us that, and because of uh, uh, dyslexia and all the different things, they, they make judgment and say, you are this, you are that. Um, but they don't know and understand the mind that God has created. And so the mind is a powerful tool that he has given us to help govern and guide us through as we take uh, authority through the spirit man and the mind and the soul and the body and we live. And that is the harmony that he has called us into. But when we are in disharmony within ourselves, Kristen, is where those magic and those madness take place. The, uh, you talk about some of the, the, um, uh, the manifestation of that, the pornography and all the other things. But how God explains that is when Adam fell, he gave birth to a kingdom, the kingdom of darkness, and God created another kingdom, and he had the kingdom. So when one becomes born again, we're ripped out from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God. And we fail or we fall because Christian, we still apply the Christian, the, uh, the, king, the principles that we learned while we were in the kingdom of darkness in the kingdom of God, their son, and it never works. And so people call us hypocrites. You could see the difference. And so he called us to love. He called us to do certain things. But the conversation, Christian, is, is still the same. He still wants to pull you and I separately to have that appointed time to speak to us and say to us when people are telling you that you are inadequate, you're whatever, and he wants to say to you, no, um, your self-worth is much more important than that. And so you'd mentioned the key to beginning to understand the power of loving the self. And as you begin to love yourself from your relationship with God, the principle is this, to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul and thy mind, and to love thy neighbor as you love yourself. Christian, most of us are not in love with ourselves. We're not in love with our God, so we don't know how to love. So he slows us down to try to teach us that through the power of self-love as we begin to have that relationship. Tell me a little more about your appointments that you had to uh, handle uh, the self-love piece. I know sales does work on that aspect of it to build your ego, to make you um, uh, see how strong you are. But then that spiritual part of you is there also to um, manage that so that it doesn't become out of hand. Because if it becomes out of hand, that's when we start acting like we're just crazy people. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you're hitting a lot of uh, good points there, Ken, and I appreciate you kind of doing a, little, a salvation of that because it's you know, you're exactly right. One of the things is you know in sales specifically, you know, you have certain affirmations, right? Now it's it's a little yes. secular, right? Uh, you know, how many mm -hmm. affirmations? I did, I did it. I was like in that. sales for years. Yeah, I okay, did it for yeah, years, yeah. man. And so yeah, it's it's, it's very good, right? Having those affirmations, sitting there, I'm a winner, I'm a champion, I'm successful, I'm mm -hmm. you know that this is who I am, you know. And, and one of the things is is you know. Uh, one of the things I've learned from like, you know, meditation and stuff like that. Uh, now, like I said, it, it is very secular still, but you can still use these principles regardless. Um, so one of the things is, is like every time, you know, I meditate or think or focus or even go for a run, I think about breaking the old Christian Evans and creating new Christian D Evans, right? Now, in, in, in the spiritual realm, right, what is so beautiful about this is that there mm -hmm. are certain things that says God loves you so much that he gave his only son to die for you. Right. And once you understand that and truly grab mm -hmm. that, the, the realization of that is just remarkable because, you know, we've all we're all we're all just dumpster fires. Right. We're we're, we're just mm -hmm. we're all sin. Right. And it's just it's and, and you think about all the things you've done and then you sit there and realize someone someone paid for it already. You know, it's, it's like going into a, to a restaurant and someone paid for your meal. It's 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 not even at, at all the same similarity, but to some extent for people to wrap around is like, oh, that's that's nice. Someone paid for it. But it's like doing that day in and day out and day in and day out, it's, it's already done. Uh, and then also one of the things is, is if you look at the Bible and realize how much God loves you, you know, he says, okay, um, you know, I, I've taken care of the sparrow. Will I not take care of you? And he asked that. 
They said, of course, I'm going to take care of you, right? And, and provide and, and things like that. Now, it does not mean that we should always live like that. It means that, hey, what should we learn? Because I think God wants us to, you know, wants to bless us at high levels, financially, resourcefully, spiritually, relationally, you know, um, and things like that. But at the end of the day, we have to make the right choices. And there's that's what's, you know, obviously called wisdom. So what I always found very interesting is, I mean, I, I used I used to have a, a podcast called Millennials Seeking Wisdom, and then I changed it to a journey with Christian D. Evans podcast, because then we could talk a lot about all sorts of things. But one of the key aspects behind it is we talk about wisdom. And, and the reason why is because we're in a very knowledge-based culture right now, where we can learn and learn and learn and learn on YouTube and podcasting and stuff like that. And that's fantastic. But see, one of the things is I was listening to Pastor, and he, he, he made it so beautiful. He said, knowledge is knowing God. Wisdom is walking with God. Right. And then you start realizing, oh, that's the difference. That's the path. See, what? And it's the same thing with finances. Right. Oh, I know that I should save. I know that I should spend less than I make. Right. It's, it's like con- common sense. Like, OK, that, that makes sense. But doing it is totally different. Right. Actually doing that, that, that action is, is different. Right. Uh, oh, I know not to lie, cheat, steal, uh, you know, have these things. Right. Whatever. But to do that, that's different, right? And that's where God comes in. He gives you the strength. He gives you the words. He, he gives you the encouragement. Mm. But also he'll, he'll, he'll slap you upside the head with truth. I mean, that's, that's kind of what I'm going through right now a little bit. I'm not ready to tell the whole story and stuff like that. But really, what, you know, God is slapping upside the head with, with really hard truths yeah. that he's mentioned in the Bible. But it wasn't until now that's really kind of stuck out. It's like, oh, oh, okay, that, that, makes, that makes perfect sense, right? Or, or you know, obviously... What's really incredible, and just kind of share with you, so when I was um, you know, struggling with pornography, one of the things is, is in the Bible it says, when you lust at a woman, you've committed adultery. So it's like, whoa, that's pretty intense. Well, no, is, is it okay if I kind of lust or, you know, look but don't touch kind of thing? No, he said, if you even lust, you've committed adultery. Like, it's that intense. And so, so many of us definitely in the culture, see, it's, it's and it's easy to do this. Oh, okay, it's it's okay if I watch Game of Thrones because it's it's just got a little nudity. It's just got a little bit. It's it's okay, you know. We you know it doesn't arouse me or anything. It doesn't make any. Uh, it's okay if I watch this show because it's just got a little bit, you know. And it's, it's nothing too crazy. Just a little bit. And, and and a really good another pastor, he was talking about how there's an analogy where it says okay. And there's this kid that came in and said, hey mom, I want to watch my favorite movie with my friends. Okay, let me do. He says, oh, okay, that's cool. Is it a good movie? It's, you know, it's, it's rated R. Well, it's got a little nudity, just a little. She said, "Okay, that's fine." So while her while his friends did that, he, oh, she good, went out and, and and made some brownies, some of his favorite dessert, and made some brownies. And what he did was she she was making up the mix. And while she was making up the mix in the kitchen, she went outside, grabbed a little poop, little poop from the dog, just a little, not much, just a little, and put it in the brownie mix. Mix it up, mix it up. And so one of the things is. Is that she was over here and saying, uh, you know, she, she mixed it up, she she put it all in together, and then she gave it to her friend, his, you know, his, her son and her friends, and said, "This is your favorite brownie mix. This is what I got for you." Now, I do want to let you know that all I did was just put a little poop in it, not a lot, just a little poop. And then we all know that the whole point of of the of the story is a little poop can go a long way, right? And the whole point behind that is, see, you have to eradicate it totally, eradicate it, get rid of it. You know, it's and I think so many times we can live in this lukewarm culture. And and I, I think you have to be radical in that, you know, almost. And I'm not saying it in a negative connotation. I just realize just from certain things. And even now what I'm facing, you have to be radical. You have to destroy it and it, it, it eliminate it fully from your life. You cannot you cannot. Uh, even have a little temptation in that regard, because it, it'll it'll destroy you. And, and God is very clear in, in some of those biblical verses uh, about different stories that have happened. And so, also talking on your other point regarding, like, of course, you know, business structure, right? Understanding business and understanding how this, okay, how this can directly impact your life. Well, see, once you get real focused in, you know, creating these boundaries that you've been able to develop and dial in. Now you're able to take those same boundaries and structures that you're able to establish over here in your personal life, relational life, whatever, and basically adapt them over to your business life. It it floods over into your business life, into your financial life as well. And and, and there's no coincidence in that at all. There's a correlation, I think, 100%. And, you know, again, for example, you know, you're waking up, 
and you know, okay, I'm, I'm not going to watch movies, right? Or watching Netflix or anything like that. Now, I always, I always definitely on business podcasts, I always tell people, if you and your wife are talking about a fictional character on Netflix, and that's your, that's your conversation for date nights, that's your, that's what you're talking about in the morning, the evening, then you know your relationship is in a bad situation. You realize, okay, you guys are talking about fictional characters, fictional characters that do not care about you or your wife. So you might as well start talking about some things that are more intentional, like dream building, ambitions. How can you make an impact? How can you give back? How can you volunteer? You know, things that build that relationship and, and teach your kids at that higher level. Now, I don't have any kids. But that's what, that's what um, you know, many years ago, my wife and I, we, we, we started implementing that. And yes, there's still ups and downs and everything like that. But my, my whole point is, is you have to be intentional with that, right? We were intentional going to a soup kitchen. We were intentional volunteering our time with a... Um, with a kid's camp. And the reason why behind that is because guess what? That was, that was intentionality. We were able to talk about that. We were able to explain a little bit about different situations. And um, that's why it's, it's just remarkable to see kind of the results in, in, in respect to that. Um, so that, that's what I, I just want to share with your audience a little bit is those stories and, and things like that, uh, that really help you understand, okay, you have to be intentional with your time and energy and effort and, um, you know, uh, and that's why I love what you were saying there, because it's just it, it, it's, it's a beautiful summation of, of what what um, what God truly is in, in your life. Yeah, it's it's wonderful, man. Um, I try to teach that to people all the time, that uh, he's a beautiful father. He's a beautiful thing, the most beautiful thing in the planet. Um, I enjoy my relationship and what he has taught me and who I am as a creator, because um, while I was a young teacher and I'd asked several pastors about where was the man when God was creating the universe, um, did he put him aside or, and, or was the man inside God calling the light and calling all the things together? And um, he was calling all of it together. And when he was finished, then uh, he created the mud uh, the body to house us, he uh, created all of the organs in that body. And then he uh, released that spirit to be housed in this body. Why? Because he made us legal so that we can take control of this universe right here. This was ours. Um, he had to tie us to this particular space, this earth, uh, this atmosphere, because once we have released and relinquished the body, we are able to go to different universes. And so he had to tie us here so that we can become the stewards of this particular um, dimension because he gave it to us. And he said, I want you guys to be the God of this universe, of this, this dimension. But when we, when we, uh, we disobeyed him and uh, uh, the mind, the disconnection took place. We lost that communication because our we thought like him. When Adam named everything, God didn't intervene and said, no, I didn't want that because the man was thinking the same like him. He was just like him until when the intervention took place and that severed, but God was still interested in that. Christian is to me, I want the audience to understand that God was still interested in the conversation, even though he knew his man had sinned. He doesn't care, the scripture says, come as you are, because he's interested in that conversation. And he, um, he still wants that with us. He's empowered us to become creators so that we can change our life where we are, where people have, uh, our teachings have brought us. He will elevate us from there. And the purpose is so that you and I can now begin to teach people to become disciples so that they can be translated from the other kingdom into this new kingdom that God has. Because why? He wants citizens in that kingdom. He wants to populate this kingdom so that um, we can become, as the Bible calls us, sons of God. And so I love the fact that you are here sharing uh, the insight that God has given to you as you uh, propel and move forward in your life. It's a beautiful thing to witness and to hear. And so um, it 
uh, it is my honor that you're here, and I'm glad that the audience are getting the chance to hear all of this from, I believe, with a Christian um, uh, turn on it so that you can understand the power that we have the same struggles just like anyone else. We have to overcome the same just like anyone else. Um, we are simply children of God that are not perfected as yet, but are interested in that, that meeting that God is still interested in, and that's um, having that quiet time with his creation and uh, so that he can tell us, Christian, who we truly, truly, truly are, that we are uh, the baddest things on this planet if we would allow ourselves to be taught that. And most people, as you say, and the lesson that you had talked about earlier, um, but some people are not ready, even Jesus when he came, and it was compassionate detachment. Um, he had compassion for the people, and but he was focused on his assignment that he what he came for. And there were some people that he knew it wasn't part of his at all. And he uh, had compassion, but he was still detached from the pain of that. And so you and I, those are lessons that you and I have to learn as individuals as we move forward in our life. But um, uh, here you are, you are podcasting and all the good stuff that is out there. You have um, changed your life. You are uh, this uh, mature young man focus, uh, got all the training. So now how do you... Um, how do you walk someone through that comes to you and say, hey, um, Christian, I'm a mess. I heard that message that you guys talked about. Um, I want to get on this path to become a better human spirit. Um, what are the tools that you can give to him and talk to him about some of those uh, fears that you had to overcome in your walk so that you can empathize and guide this young man out of his place or young woman. Yeah, and, and, and Ken, I really appreciate what you're saying there as well, because see, what's, what's so interesting is once you get that truth, that it, and I look at like financial, mm -hmm. okay, let me give you an analogy. So obviously a lot of us have you know gotten debt and whatever, okay? And once you start realizing yeah. the first step is to become debt-free, right? Okay, now you, you're at ground mm -hmm. zero, wonderful. Well, that's not where God wants you to be. Now all of a sudden, now that you're ground zero, now you can really build incredible abundance. Now. I'm not just talking about wealth. I'm talking about also, you know, spiritual, relational. So obviously, once you understand that yeah. your sins have been paid for, and you have that amazing relationship mm -hmm. with God, boom, you're at ground zero. But that doesn't doesn't mean that's where you end up. That's where you stay. That means okay, now you can get yeah. closer. And what what the, what that looks like? Mm -hmm. See, something that my dad actually even even just recently uh, uh, mentioned is you should. Uh, and this is what I would recommend as well. Uh, now, this is something that, you know, uh, I've been blessed to have a really cool dad. He's, he's, he's very knowledgeable in a lot of things that he's done. And one of the books is because I always started reading the Bible, but it was always like I started with Genesis. And, and I was like, man, it's mm -hmm. just it's, you know, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus. I mean, you go through all that. And so it's, it's just it's dense. <laughs> and so one of the things is that's more, yeah. most applicable to most people. And it's what dad, my, my dad was telling me is start with Romans. So Romans, yeah. uh, you know, I was asking why, why? And I was like, you know, because it's a it's, mm -hmm. it's a letter to the Roman people. And I asked dad the other day, literally, yeah. I said, why start with Romans? What about Corinthians and Thessalonians and all these other, you know, letters that he wrote to the people? He said, well, those are more church, right? He was, he was discussing church-related situations. Romans are the, the Jews and the Gentiles. And um, now yeah. I'm just diving mm -hmm. into that. And I just want to share with you because I yeah. want to share with people where, where I'm at. And I think start with Romans, mm -hmm. and then, of course, you, you you add on Proverbs and Psalms as well on top of that. But start with Romans, yeah. um, because then it allows you to understand, okay, well, what does God say about, you know, these, these circumstances that most people are in, right? And definitely for the non-believers, mm -hmm. sometimes, you know, you, you can't talk about, um, you know, these inner church situations and topics before you, you yeah. start with um you know, the book of Roman in there. And I think that's, and then of course, you know, my dad was mentioning it. Once you start with Romans, you add Proverbs and Psalms, one a day or whatever. 
Then what mm -hmm. happens is you can add, uh, start reading Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, and those are four accounts of historical accounts of Jesus' life. And uh, with that yeah, yeah. foundation almost, then that's where you're able to. And now, this is where I look at it, okay? You don't just go in there and read it. Go, okay, cool, wonderful, right? Mm -hmm. You don't just go in there and, and just read it to get done. Like, okay, check it off. Wonderful. I did mm -hmm. it for today. <laughs> what I always found very interesting, and this is something I'm still working on and understanding a little bit at a higher level, is you sit there and meditate on it, right? You sit there and, and you meditate on yeah. it. You sit there and listen to it and say, how is this impacting? And one of the things that my, my dad has taught me that I've, I've, I've really, I've never really implemented into my life until just recently, where, you know, you, you sit there and go, okay, what is this trying to tell me during this time? What is, well, you know, Mm -hmm. what, what do I not see right now that, that God is trying to show me in this passage? Mm -hmm. And I think those, some of those passages specifically are, are some of the most uh, profound in regards to a lot of people's situations. So that's kind of what I look at is, because mm -hmm. like I said, once you understand, like phase one is, okay, God loves me and, and he, he, he paid for all my sins. But like Paul said, it doesn't mean mm -hmm. that you keep going back to those sins. It means that, okay, now, now yeah. that you know that you're sinful and you, you confess that and say, okay, well, I need help. And you need to go through Romans. Yeah. And one of the things that I was very guilty on, honestly, is I would always go, mm -hmm. instead of the Bible, I would go to self-improvement books. I would go to secular stuff, yeah, yeah. you know, meditation, third eye chakra, meditate, blah, 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 gut it out. Mm -hmm. It's you, it's yeah. your willpower. And you start <laughs> realizing, honestly, this, this, this is the truth, that you will never have the strength to overcome what you need to overcome. Mm -hmm. You just don't. Yeah. But mm -hmm. God does. And God will yeah. use that to help you empower others. And once you humble yourself to yeah. say, okay, I, I cannot do this alone. But what I faced numerous times is in my life was, okay, I would hit that point and I'd say, okay, I'm sorry. I repented myself since. And then what would I do? I try to gut it out myself with willpower because it was secular and it was not based on truth. Does that make sense? And mm -hmm. so once you come over yeah. here and realize, yeah. okay, I need to, I need to read what the Bible tells you. I need to understand that. Mm -hmm. and, and like I said, you know, it's, it's a path that I'm still walking. It's it's a, it's a path that I'm just implementing at a higher level. And I'm not at all telling you I'm a theologian or I'm just a person, average person that's walking through my own troubles and, and learning from, from what God's telling you. And, and and one of the things is, is I want to share, you know, see, I, I look at this in, in like business, a true winner. Mm -hmm. When you tell them what they need to hear, it doesn't mean that they like it. It means that they need it though. Mm -hmm. They need the truth. Yeah. And it's, and for yeah. a true winner, that's the same thing. They want it and they need it. Now, that's yeah. the same thing mm -hmm. that's going to happen in the Bible. And I just want to, I want people to get, mm -hmm. get realistic, okay? And this is what's happened to me. God will say certain truths in the Bible that's going to slap you upside the head. And it's going to be like, wow, mm -hmm. that's intense. And you're like, man, yeah. that's, that's, just, that's intense. But you need it <laughs> to help you release yourself from that. Does that make sense? Yeah. And, and you, mm -hmm. you, you realize that that truth is hard. It's hard to swallow sometimes, and you have to step back sometimes. Okay, but mm -hmm. with that, it helps you understand, okay, you know what? God will give you the courage. He'll give you the strength. He'll give you the wisdom to be able to walk through that. And um, I, again, mm -hmm. that's that's what I would suggest is, is, is starting with starting there. That's just something that I've learned. Um, and and I, think, I think that's – I think sometimes we look at the Bible as this huge conglomerate, right? This is how I looked at it. And it's mm -hmm. like, man, it's, it's so yeah. dense. It's so whatever. And, and even if I did, like I, I read the Bible – you know, uh, in one year Bible kind of, uh, kind of thing. And that was cool. But what did I take away from it? Mm -hmm. Right. Once you come in with yeah, more of, yeah. and I always find very interesting because when people really hit life and you're in this circular situation and God's putting a lot of this pressure on you and you start realizing, okay, God wants me to learn something from this. What, what am I learning? Then you're humble yourself and then you start being very teachable. Right. And uh, mm -hmm. um, I think that's, that's kind of the process, if you will, is you have to really, dive into this content in the Bible. And, 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 and speaking of what you're saying as well, we come in with beliefs. Certain situations mm -hmm. have caused certain beliefs that we run into. And this is what I want people to understand, okay? Mm -hmm. You never go into the Bible and try to take your belief, okay, and have the Bible fit around your belief. Never do that. You always mm -hmm. start with the Bible and then morph your belief around that. What is the Bible telling me? Mm -hmm. And then obviously develop a, a, a belief and thought process behind it. Because once you understand that God is mm -hmm. never wrong and God is truth, then you must be wrong 
and you must be true. Not, not mm-hmm. true. Does that make sense? And so there, there yeah. has to be, mm-hmm. there has to be. And so, so many times I see a lot of people, and I'm just sharing this because from my own experience, right? We always like to, yeah. Oh, it's it's okay to look but not touch. No, God says yeah. this, no. right? And all of a sudden you go, yeah. Well, it's it's okay to slightly, you know, watch this lust. And no, no. What is you know? And it's it's yeah. very it's it's tough. And mm-hmm. I want you to understand, it's not legalistic. Right? There's grace. There's there's a mm-hmm. there's a point where okay. Am I legalistic? As, and, and oh gosh, if I'm doing something bad, God's gonna you know blow, you know, smite me down. No, God is grace, gracious, and you'll never be perfect. Mm-hmm. But it doesn't mean that you should not strive to 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 have a relationship with God, and God loves you. Does that make sense? Well, yeah, I I think, um, and when I taught people, I try to teach them this to um, what you're talking. About. The book of Romans actually is one of my favorite books. The revelation that, and the book that I wrote, I wrote two books. I wrote one that called Blueprint of Faith. And the Blueprint of Faith is based on, on uh, chapter four in the book of Romans on the life of Abraham. And when God had to teach him uh, about faith and what it is, and the Bible calls him the father of faith. And so um, the concept that I try to simplify what is going on with people is that we have the kingdoms because Jesus came and he preached. He said the kingdom of God is at hand. So he was talking about another place, another uh, kingdom, the kingdom that we are used to, we are born into. It's called the kingdom of darkness and certain uh, things, uh, behavior, mindset governs in that uh, the flesh uh, the the uh, desires of the flesh, the the will, as far as um, uh, lying and stealing and cheating, it tells us what those principles are. And so, when one becomes born again and he's translated into this uh, new kingdom, the Bible says God actually now begins to create a new creature. Um, for uh, He takes away the old spirit of the man. Because that was the one that was damaged, that caused the separation with the with the connection. He takes away. He says, uh, "Behold, I have. You must be born again." And what that means, he said, "I will give you a new spirit. You must be born of the spirit and of water." So he takes away that old spirit. He puts a new spirit, and this new spirit here is still housed in this corrupt shell. And so, this flesh, the Bible tells us is bent on fulfilling the desires that it's used to fulfilling. And so the, the, Paul talks about the war is between the flesh and the spirit man, that is this new spirit is in there. But the Bible tells us that we are going to get a new body when, we, when Jesus shows up, and that's where um, you know, this body of ours becomes uh, like his. But the spirit man... Who we are, that man that communicates with God is uh, powerful. God wants him to rule now over the soul and the body. Mm -hmm. And that is when we begin to read who we are in the scripture. And he says, oh, this new man is not to judge. Oh, I can't, you can't judge your friends. He says, judge not or you will be judged just like you judge them. He says, you can't cuss. Um, He says, uh, clean up your, your language, he says, to uh, your behavior. Uh, Paul talks about you can't behave as how you used to behave. The book of Romans attests to that. But he begins to teach us the certain principles. In this kingdom, this new place, the just shall live by faith. And so the in the old kingdoms, we, we live by sight, the senses, or we walk by faith not by sight. So that means for we walk by faith, not by the senses, what we're used to. And so the lesson, uh, Christian, is as we learn how to walk this walk, and when you look at the chapter 4 in in Romans, it teaches you how Abraham began to walk by faith, how God taught him. His name was Abram. God changed his name to Abraham. Abraham means the father of many nations. So God changed his name to what he wanted him to be. Why? Because he wanted to change his confession. And so one of the things that you and I have to change in our life is what we confess about ourselves, who we are. Um, 
as you were saying that when we were in sales and when we were in sales, I am good. I am great. I'm a great. And you confess and you believe who you are. So as Abraham and anyone start con- calling him Abraham, they were all confessing that he was the father of many nations. So God changed his confession. The other thing, if you look in the scripture in Romans 4, it says, uh, through hope, through he, it, hope was a part of the, uh, who hoped against hope, it tells us, um, we are to behave totally different. And if you follow that uh, from 19 verses um, 14, 19 and on, it, that whole capsule was where God gave me the revelation about the blueprint of faith and what it is. And so that's what you're talking about, Christian, is that we go into that book for revelation, for God to begin to now begin to continue that meeting that he had with Adam in the garden. He says, where are you? As you begin to read those things, he now begins to talk to you as he did with Adam. Okay, this is who you are. Oh, you don't need to do that, man. It's not because, you know, it's, it's, it's just going to short short circuit you somewhere else. You don't need to do this. You don't need to do that. And it's not because he's trying to make you less cool. Actually, he's trying to make you more powerful than you can ever, ever dream. And so as you begin to have those conversations with God, those meetings with him through visitation and with him sitting down reading and studying the book of Romans, as he said in the Proverbs, um, that is about teaching you wisdom, um, all of these things that you, the tools that are necessary for you and I to become powerful on this place so that we can lift people up, men and women, so that they can get to know who God is in his power and in their power and now affecting um, the nation and man as a whole, changing the world, man. This is what it's all about, changing the world. Yes, indeed. Yes, indeed. Man, <laughs> and exciting stuff, man. And uh, I just appreciate you being, uh, you know, allowing me to be on this podcast and ask some really great questions and diving into certain, certain topics that, yeah, man. honestly, we, we just don't get to uh, and just being authentic. So this, this no. is awesome stuff. I really appreciate it, bud. Oh, no, man. And thank you. And Christian, I want to thank you for coming and visiting us, man. You have uh, deposited so much to us and to encourage us all. And it was an honor to have you here. And it is my hope that you come back and visit us here at Threads of Enlightenment because this was why this thing was birthed. God gave this to me to have this conversation uh, to show people that the principles that everyone talks about in the businesses and all the other places is it doesn't have to be anything about religion. It is your relationship with your God, with this God Almighty who created it. And I want to thank you, man, for coming by and sharing your fate and with everyone. And I personally want to thank you for that. Definitely, definitely. And Ken, I really appreciate what you're doing um, because it, it, it takes a, a courageous man to go out there and, and speak the truth and have these tough conversations and and not just be naturalistic and go be happy and, and, and secularism, but it's it's to to face your truth and to face the truth, the truth, uh, not your truth, not his yes. truth, the truth, the truth that God wants you to hear. And he's knocking and he's sitting there knocking and knocking and knocking. And, you know, his, his knuckles are bleeding because he wants, he wants to be in your heart. He loves you so much. Uh, but you know, that's, that's not, yeah. you know, once you accept him in the heart, that's just the beginning. And once you, once you understand that, then beginning. you really develop the next level yeah. and it just, it's, it's profound. Yeah. Uh, and I'm still, you know, I'm 28 years yes, old better. and there's so much more of my life that I, I've, I've yet to experience him in, in, in my, in my life at a high level. So again, I can't, I really appreciate you uh, allowing me to be on, man. This is awesome stuff. All right, man. Thank you. Everyone who's listening to this broadcast, we hope to continually help you to learn how to embrace moments of darkness because it is in the darkness that we learn how to develop and use our abilities to truly see those parts of ourselves often invisible to us in the light. It becomes your responsibility to navigate through all of your trials to find out who you truly are and begin your journey to loving yourself which is possibly one of the most difficult things you will ever do in your life. To love yourself 
and to find the real you. But always remember to enjoy the journey. Thank you for coming by. Please subscribe. And if you can support us financially, we deeply appreciate it. Thank you.